we meet in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The very first thing I'm going to do is to light our fourth Advent candle. We light these candles in praise of God, our Creator, who brings order out of chaos, light out of darkness, and invites us to share in his joy. Welcome. Welcome to St. Mary's and to this carol service. We are here. <laughs> and whether you're joining us virtually online via Zoom or Facebook, or whether you've actually made it here in person, thank you, well done, and welcome indeed. I think many of you will know just how important to the life of St. Mary's is our choir. And so you'll know how much they were missed during the long days of the lockdowns, how thrilled we are to have had them back with us in the last few months, and how grateful we are that in an extraordinarily short period of time they have rehearsed and perfected this carol service for us. So in advance I thank them all and James on your behalf. I wonder how you're feeling this evening at the end of this long and difficult year. The past nine months have been a, a wearying and wearing road to travel. But we have gathered here today to hear good news. Christmas is good news, the best news. And I pray that this service will remind you of that good news of God's love, born again in Jesus Christ. Now, I don't expect that it will be a surprise to you to hear that there are coronavirus-related notices. We've been very careful in making our preparations so that we are COVID-secure, and I just need to run through a few things in relation to that. Thank you for coming prepared with your face coverings. We will need you to wear them at all times. Please try and maintain that social distance of a meter uh, while you're wearing your masks, better still two meters from anybody else not in your own household or bubble. So please stay in your pew unless you're coming out to read. And if you come to read, please do sanitize your hands just before you get to the lectern. This is the weirdest of all these little notices. No singing in a carol service. Even though you may be aching to sing, we have the choir to sing for us. And please try and resist the urge to join in. Um, you will have, and I hope you feel very special in having your names attached to a, a track and trace slip on the yellow slips. We'd ask you, if you haven't used the QR code as you came into church, just to fill in that test and trace slip um, and leave it in your pews for us to collect afterwards. It will only be used in the event of anybody testing positive for coronavirus and for NHS test and trace and will be kept securely for 21 days and destroyed after that. At the end of the service, we're going to listen to the voluntary that Richard will play for us and then the stewards will come and let you know when it's your turn to leave so don't create a, a bottleneck at the exits and finally um, in the very unlikely event of an emergency those social distance rules no longer apply uh, because we ask you just to very carefully and uh, safely leave the building by the exits in the uh, west side of the church so all three exits and the north porch and perhaps if you're here in the sanctuary by the vestry door um, please make sure everyone is with you when you leave if that's needed and assemble on the rectory lawn where roger uh, roger and um 
Judy, our church wardens will be ready for you to report to them. Thank you once again for being here. If you haven't signed up for the crib service, there are a few places left for our crib service. It's four o'clock on Christmas Eve. Um, and more spaces yet at our midnight mass, our 11 o'clock uh, start for midnight mass on Christmas Eve. Please do use the Eventbrite link on our Facebook page. And there are some sign-up sheets at the back of church. So do ask one of the stewards or wardens as you, as you leave for, for your name to be on that. But for the moment, I'm going to uh, go on and uh, wait at the back and do enjoy this beautiful service.
My brothers and sisters, in the name of Christ, I welcome you. We have come together as Christmas draws near to prepare for our celebration of the birth of God's beloved Son. Through the days of Advent, we are following the light of Christ. And now we travel in spirit with Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem to acclaim with the multitude of the heavenly host the coming of the Prince of Peace. Through scripture and silence, prayer and song, let us hear again the wonderful story of our redemption. And hearing, let us rejoice and respond with lively faith. Let us pray. Almighty God, you make us glad with the yearly remembrance of the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that, as we joyfully receive him as our Redeemer, we may with sure confidence behold him when he shall come to be our Judge, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
first lesson is taken from Genesis chapter 3, verses 8 to 14. The fall. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman who, gave, who you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is it that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serp serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. Oh, true. 
The second lesson is taken from Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 to 19. The promise to Abraham. After these things, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham. And Abraham said, Here I am. And God said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains that I shall show you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac. He cut the wood for the burnt offering and set out and went to the place in the distance that God had shown him. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place far away. Then Abraham said to his young men, Stay there with the donkey. The boy and I will go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood of the bird's offering and laid it on his son Isaac, and he himself carried the fire and the knife. So the two of them walked on together. Isaac said to his father Abraham, Father, and he said, Here I am, my son. And Isaac said, The fire and the wood are here, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God himself will provide the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So the two of them walked on together. When they came to the place that God had shown him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to kill his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. The angel said, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in the thicket by its horns. Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place, The Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, On the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, by my self I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you, and I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies, and by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessing for themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. So Abraham returned to his young men, and they arose and went together to Beersheba. And Abraham lived at Beersheba.
The third lesson is taken from Isaiah chapter 9, uh, verses 6 to 7. The prophecy of the Messiah's birth. The people who walked in the darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of the deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onwards and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The fourth lesson is taken from Micah, chapter 5, verses 2 to 4. The Messiah will be born in Bethlehem. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore, he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth then the rest of his kindred kindred shall return to the people of israel and he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the lord 
in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth.
The fifth lesson is from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. The Annunciation to Mary. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her.
Sixth lesson, Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. The birth of Jesus. In those days, a decree went from out the Emperor Augustus that the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quir Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went to the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the same came for her to the, deliver the child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for him for them at the inn. As you are able, please would you stand to listen to this next The seventh lesson is taken from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 16. The shepherds go to the manger. 
In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace amongst those whom he favours. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. The eighth lesson is taken from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. The Magi led by the star to Jesus. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, 
Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we have observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophets. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler, who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men, and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they heard the king, they set out, and there, ahead of them, went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that, that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chest, they offered, offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh.
The ninth lesson is from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, beginning to read at the first verse. The incarnation of the Word of God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh, and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth.
please would you sit or kneel for prayer Let us pray. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flocks, the work of Christmas begins to find the lost to heal the broken and all who suffer to feed the hungry to free the prisoner to rebuild the nations to bring peace among the people to make music in the heart loving God rise within us like a star and make us restless till we journey out to do your work and to seek our rest in you. Rejoicing in the revelation of God's love to us, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
Please, would you stand as you're able for this blessing? May you who have heard of the angel's song rejoice in the holy birth. May you who have heard of the shepherds glorifying and praising God give God praise and glory. May you who know that the word is made flesh be aware that he lives among you and the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always. Amen.